the Reflection Show. My name is Martha Anavila. Um, today we want to take you back a bit for you to understand the importance of your eye, how to take care of your eye, especially for those of us who know someone or we ourselves are victims of cataract or glaucoma. This is a condition that a lot of us take for granted and sometimes end up getting totally blind. I'll be speaking with Dr. Judith Simon. She is uh, with the Northern Community Eye Hospital here in Tamale, helping us to understand everything that we need to know. A very good, amazing surgeon and an eye specialist, helping a lot of us um, here in the North see clearly and see effectively. I, I want us to go for a break. When we are back, we delve straight into the discussion. Just stay tuned. <music> Welcome back uh, to the Reflection Show here. Um, Dr. Jude, thank you very much for joining me on the show. Thank you so very much for inviting me. It's... Uh, so want to look at uh, quickly the, the eye. I see you have um, a, a label before us. Can you take us through what the eye, what we see, and what the, in the, uh, the medical perspective, what the eye is, and how we can know that there is something wrong with the eye? So the eye is one of our most important organs. 80% of the information we take in from the world comes through our eyes. So anybody can imagine if someone gets blind, it is a terrible, terrible condition and we feel totally cut off from the world. Mm. Blind people frequently become a huge burden on their family mm. and on their community. Mm. So it is very, very important to keep our eyes healthy. So let me just uh, explain uh, quickly about how the eye works. So the eye works like a camera. It has a front part of the eye. Uh, I'm sure it on this uh, model. It's called the cornea. It is like the window of the eye. It's clear, but from trauma or from other things, it can become cloudy and that can cause blurry vision. Now the second part of the eye is the iris, which is brown in black people. And then behind the iris, there is a lens which concentrates the light rays on the retina. The retina is the film in the back of the eye. So this is how the normal eye looks. And in the back of the eye, there is a very, very thin film layer called retina. And that also can, damage from, can be damaged from certain diseases. And that can also cause poor vision or blindness. Now, the last part of the eye I want to talk about is the so-called optic nerve. This is the wire which connects the eye to the brain. And this wire consists of over a million small, small fibers. And if this wire, the optic nerve gets injured, then we cannot make it live again. That also can result in uh, serious eye problems. We are commonly, um, or commonly we know that the eye actually affected with two main conditions, glaucoma and cataract. And it's a condition that a lot of people are suffering from. What is glaucoma? Let me start from that perspective. So let's start, talk first about glaucoma. Glaucoma in Dagbanle is Zompialgu. I don't know the name on your language, okay. but in many local languages, there isn't even a word for it. Okay. Uh, one of our main problems is that uh, people who don't have that much education about health, they think there can be only one thing wrong with the eye. So they lump all eye diseases under the same cover. Mm. So they, most people cannot tell us the difference between eye diseases. Mm. So glaucoma is just one of the many, many diseases which can affect the eye. And unfortunately, it's very common in Ghana, especially in North Ghana. Mm. Now, what happens in glaucoma is that the eye makes fluid to give nutrition to its small, small parts. Mm. And there are also channels inside the eye where the fluid drains out of the eye. Mm. Now, if these small, small channels get blocked for whatever reason, we don't really understand why it happens. Then the pressure inside the eye goes up very high. The eye becomes hard. Mm. And the pressure on the long term damages the optic nerve, the wire, which connects the eye to the brain. And that can result in poor vision and 
eventually even in blindness. How do I know I have glaucoma? Now, the major problem with glaucoma is that in the beginning, even in the medium stages, it gives absolutely no symptoms. Mm. We call it the silent thief of vision. In the beginning, the peripheral vision, the side vision gets lost slowly, slowly, slowly. And it takes many, many years. And eventually, even the central vision can get lost. But when only a part of the vision is lost, most people do not notice because the change is so very slow. So the vast majority of our patients who come, they already lost one eye. That's when they notice. And by then, it's a little bit late for the treatment. Or we can also pick it up during screening exams or if they come with a different problem. Is there a connection or a similarity between glaucoma and cataract? Well, there is a slight connection, but it's really not, not that strong. So they are two different diseases. It's like also inside your body, you can have high blood pressure and then you can have an ulcer on your foot. They really don't have much in common and it's it's a bit similar for the eyes so glaucoma and cataract they are two different diseases but if the person has just poor vision it's the person himself or herself cannot tell it if it's glaucoma or cataract or maybe it's a third disease to be able to decide uh, we have to do an eye exam so what is cataract now now cataract is different from glaucoma Cataract is a cloudy lens. So as I said before, the eye has a lens in the front part. It's, uh, it's about the size of a corn, a, a, a grain of corn. And that lens initially is clear when we are born. And as we age very, very slowly, the lens gets cloudier and cloudier. And eventually when the lens gets so cloudy inside the eye that the light rays cannot traverse it cannot travel through it and that's what we call a cataract okay now um, can it affect children yes both diseases can affect children but luckily it is very rare both cataract and glaucoma are rare diseases in children but it happens what are some of the risk factors of glaucoma and cataract well for the risk factors for glaucoma is mainly age the older one becomes the more likely it is to get glaucoma. The other risk factor is black rays. Risk factor means that if the person has that, it is much more likely to develop the disease than without the risk factor. So the second one is uh, black rays. No one really understands why, but black people are much more likely to get, to get glaucoma. Uh, the other risk factors are also being nearsighted, having diabetes, uh, having trauma to the eye and then there are other ones which are are very unusual what are the treatment options for glaucoma the treatment options uh, for glaucoma uh, what we have to do we have to decrease the eye pressure to prevent damage to the optic nerve and we can achieve that in three different ways eye drops laser or surgery Eye drops. I think that is one of the most abused form of treatment for the eye. At what point should one use an eye drop? Well, the problem with eye drops is that there are hundreds of different kind of drops available, even in Ghana. Mm. And some are for red eyes, some are for infection, some are for eye pain or dryness, and some are for glaucoma to decrease the eye pressure. But if one goes to the pharmacy, frequently even the pharmacist doesn't know himself which one is for which. So people can oh. get the wrong eye drops. But wow. there are a, a few different kinds of drops for glaucoma. And if the doctor or the eye specialist prescribes that, that is the only thing the patient should take. How about cataract? Now, cataract uh, cannot be cured by either eye drops or eyeglasses or prayer or traditional medicine. The only way to get rid of a cataract is an operation, which is to remove the cataract. Now, the word operation sounds very scary. So frequently we tell patients we will wash the eye because we actually 
wash the cataract out, but we do not mention the word operation because they get worried. But the procedure takes only about 10, 15 minutes. Wow. It's painless. We numb the eye before and frequently even by next day, the patient sees better. And usually in a week or two, they, they can see very well. So that is the only way to remove a cataract is to wash it out and nothing else would work for that. I saw a post on your Facebook page. I think uh, someone came, I don't know whether he was totally or partially blind and after the surgery he could see. Well, most patients who have cataracts, nearly all of them can see better after surgery, except if they had a second underlying problem like glaucoma or something else. So cataract surgery is nearly all the time successful and the patients regain their vision. I was what age for a child can, uh, I think I saw a baby as well on your Facebook page, or a child, um, I think under five years, who had also gone through um, a surgery. Uh, at that age, can they also go through surgery? Yes, well, that's the only way. Uh, when children are born with cataracts, usually the parents notice it or the doctor because there is a white spot in the middle of the black hole, the so-called pupil. And even for for babies or children, the only way to get rid of a cataract is to by surgery. Uh, and babies really have to be operated on soon, uh, probably within uh, six months of age, because if not, they can develop a lazy eye. And then even if they get the surgery later, they will never be able to see well. They will see small, small, but not well. I know that the Northern Community Eye Hospital has um, a laser treatment option. How does it work? Well, the laser is for glaucoma, for the disease which affects the optic nerve. And the, nobody exactly understands how the laser works. But what we do, we aim the laser beam at the small, small channels where the fluid drains from the eye with the help of a, a magnifier and an instrument. And the laser beam actually burns the walls of the channel. So the walls get narrower and then the channels get bigger and the drainage increases. And usually the eye pressure drops and it prevents further damage from happening uh, in the case of glaucoma. Would, uh, so for example, if a glaucoma patient doesn't treat it early, can that cause total blindness? Yes, well, uh, glaucoma should be treated as often as it starts. And as I said, most of the time we do not pick it up. But a glaucoma treatment means only to save the existing vision. Uh, it's different from the cataract. The cataract, we wash it out, patient will see, and it's finished. It will never come back. With glaucoma, if we start treatment, meaning lowering the eye pressure, the vision loss will stop. It will not progress anymore, but the lost vision will never come back. And unfortunately, every day we have so many patients who already come in half blind or completely blind, and we have to tell them again and again that we are so sorry, we cannot do anything to bring your vision back. Sometimes I just feel like crying, but that's just how it is. It's better than to give them some false hope. Traditional treatment that would work for the eye? Like as a medical person, have people come to your hospital and you have already tried other options? And what are the effects? Well, uh, traditional treatment does work for certain conditions and we really should not fool the patient that, oh, the patient doesn't know better, that's why he or she goes for traditional treatment. It's right in their village. They know the language, they know the person. So with mind, mind, eye problems like redness or small discharge or dryness, sometimes traditional treatment can help. But the problem is that with serious eye problems, traditional treatment do not help at all. And actually sometimes it even can be harmful. How common is glaucoma? One, in kids or children and two, in adults? In children, glaucoma is very unusual and the kind of glaucoma children get, the parents notice because their eye starts to grow bigger and bigger and bigger from the pressure. So they bring the child in and then we can treat the child. But luckily it is very, very rare in children. Now in adults, 
glaucoma, especially in Ghana, is very, very common. Uh, nearly 10% of people above age 40 have this disease, which is a huge number. There are millions and millions of, of people with glaucoma in Ghana, and most of them don't even know about it. Glaucoma is this, uh, Ghana is the second most common country for glaucoma on the whole world. Wow. Can it be, can it be prevented? Like, are there ways that need to be prevented? No, unfortunately, glaucoma cannot be prevented. Some of our patients ask us if certain diets or certain herbal treatment could prevent glaucoma, but nothing really works. In the West, they did huge studies and they tried so many things, but nothing prevents it. We used to tell jokingly to our patients that you have to choose your parents better <laughs> because uh, glaucoma, I did not mention it be. before, uh, it runs in families. So those people who have relatives, especially parents and sisters and brothers with glaucoma are much more likely to get it. But of course, that is not possible. So there is nothing to prevent it. How about cataract? Is it, is it, is it preventable? Now, cataract is also not preventable. It's mainly age-related, except for sometimes it can be from trauma. So we can prevent trauma to the eye by wearing eye protection when we do any kind of work, when there is a chance of eye injury. That's the only way to prevent the cataract, which comes from trauma. But most cataracts come from age. And the only way to prevent that is to die early, which is not a really good solution. So uh, in the West, they try different eye drops and medicines to use, but nothing works for that either. And that is proven. I want us to go for a break. We're we'll back to continue this day too. Books by Pastor A. L. Fant. They are inspired by the Holy Spirit, simple to comprehend, relevant in application, and so lovely to read. Grab copies like Dynamics of Kingdom Influence, Dynamics of Ministry, Marcus King for Church Workers, Money Matters. And she calls herself a woman. This marriage must work. No more curses. Loaded mouth. Secrets of kingdom dominion. The exploits of service. Things fall apart. Church without bleeding pulpit. Singles mingle and many more. child is having one eye condition or the other are there some signs that the parents can notice for most eye conditions luckily in children there are signs the most common condition for children to have is something called a refractive error which means that the child vision is poor but it can be improved greatly with eyeglasses so uh, Nowadays, there is a school eye screening in most schools, and then usually these children are picked up, but not all the time. So there are children who can see well near, but they cannot see the board, and they do not perform well. The teacher thinks that they are just not paying attention or, or that they are just bad children. And lots of these, they just need eyeglasses, so they, they would be able to see the board. There are also children who can see well to distance, but they have trouble reading. They have trouble seeing near. And then they do not progress well in school either because without being able to read well, uh, they are lost. So if uh, usually it is the teacher who starts to complain, not the child uh, himself. Children usually do not complain about their eyes. So if the parents should just talk to the teacher especially if the child is not doing well in school and ask the teacher do you think the child might have some trouble with the with vision or even even if the teacher doesn't say so these children should all be taken for eye examination yes yeah, so i was just coming back to that so um 
the number one treatment or things that can help kids are eyeglasses. Yes. And I believe eye drops are also... Well, the eye drops are, are not indicated very commonly in children. Uh, the main condition we prescribe is if the, children, if the child has allergies, which means that the eyes are red, they are itchy or brownish, they tear, they pain once in a while, that if it's mild, it could be left alone. But if it's moderate or severe, then we suggest allergy drops. But with those, one has to be careful also because sometimes the drops people get in the pharmacy, they are not allergy drops. Or they could be drops for the allergy, but they can cause side effects. So these drops are better uh, be bought after it's prescribed by an eye specialist. What is the best way or the best place to get treatment for, your, for the eye? Is it just walking to a pharmacy or a drugstore? Or it's always important to go into um, the eye special, or go, like go to see the, an eye doctor before you make any recommendations of treatment mm -hmm. for your eye. Well, the problem is that there are very, very few eye doctors in the north, and also there are few other eye specialists. We have eye nurses and optometrists who are all excellent, but altogether, there, our number is about a hundred, and the population is five million. So. Uh, it is really not even possible for us to take care of the whole population. So I would suggest that if someone has just mild symptoms like dryness in the eye, especially during harmattan or itching or some small redness or some small discharge, then it's okay to, to go to the drugstore because most of the time these can be treated. But if the symptoms persist or they become more serious or if the child has trouble seeing, then it is better to see an eye care worker, either an, an eye nurse, optometrist, or an eye doctor. So um, at, at the end of the day, it means that the daily, daily uh, activities can just give you an itch in the eye. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have an eye condition, but when it presents. No, but that, well, that means you have an, uh, an allergy in the eyes, which is an eye condition, but it is mild. And it doesn't even need treatment except if it becomes long term or severe. I, I hear lots of stories that we should wash our eyes regularly. Is that healthy? Well, if your eyes are normal, there is no need for washing. Like I never wash my eyes ever. But if, if there are signs of allergies, as I said before, or discharge in the eye, which is not that se severe, then washing of the eyes helps. I'm still on children. I want to uh, look at the glasses that they wear or that are given to them when they come to the hospital. We are told that when they wear the glasses for so long, they, they get to a point they cannot see without the glasses. Is that true? No, that is not true. That is just a misbelief which has been there for many, many years, but it is not true. I always tell my patients that the glasses are to make you see better. and if you don't see better, don't wear them. But that doesn't refer to children because children sometimes don't like the way they look with the glasses or their, their colleagues make fun of them. So for children, uh, they have to follow the advice of the eye specialists who prescribe the glasses. Even eyeglasses, there are many different kinds. There are glasses for near, for far, for both. There are, there are glasses with prism. So each individual case is different and then the prescriber should explain when they need to be worn but it is not true that if you wear them for too long it will spoil your eyes it's absolutely not true how often that do i have to change a particular eyeglass usually once a year for children but for adults it depends but it can be every two to three three years for adults why? Is that at that time what happens to, is there something that is in the glasses that must be changed or what? Well, the adults don't grow anymore and their eyes don't grow either. So usually for adults, the change in the prescription of the eyeglasses is just not as frequent as for children. But children should be checked every year if they have glasses to see if it changed or not. How would parents know, especially in babies, that are just born, are there signs in babies? That uh, because I realized that the earlier is yes, diagnosed, the better. 
how would you know that your children is having your child is having this eye condition or even mm-hmm. blind because some are born blind yes so uh if sometimes there is an obvious change in the eye like a white spot or the eye is growing and that that one the parents always notice usually children are also screened when they are born just to see if their eyes are healthy but if the problem happens later the parents usually notice that the child doesn't look at them doesn't smile back and when the child starts to walk then the child hits things bangs into things and then they usually bring the child in but unfortunately not right away some parents wait even years knowing that their child is blind to to bring them for help and that is basically because they they do not believe in health care they do not believe that they can get help it's very sad is it possible that as soon as the child is born, a parent can take the child to the eye doctor to check if the baby is blind? Well, the babies don't need to be checked routinely for vision because uh, they get a check when they are born, if they are born in the hospital. But if the parent has any suspicion that the, the child so doesn't see hospital, well... So they can see where the child is? They, well, when the child is born, they check the so-called red reflex. So that means that they shine a light through the front part of the eye to the back and the back part of the eye, the retina, it reflects the light in a red circle. And if the doctor or the nurse sees the red circle, that means that the eye is normal and then no more exam is necessary. But if the parent notices the symptoms which I talked about before, or they see that the eyes are go- turning in a lot or the eyes are turning out a lot, or the child always closes one eye like this, or the child uh, holds the chin like that because the eyelids are droopy, then the children should be brought in. But even that most parents notice, they are not blind, but especially in the rural communities, people do not believe that there could be help. And, or if they know there could be help, they think they won't be able to afford it anyway. So very frequently they don't bring the child at all, or they just bring the child years later when sometimes it might be too late to help. Let's go back to cataract. Can it be managed when you that, don't have access to surgery? Well, cataract cannot be managed without surgery. But a cataract surgery is quite affordable in the private facilities. is is more than in government facilities. Also, sometimes there are free outreaches to the rural communities, which the donor community eye hospital does about uh, every month or every two months. And even those patients who cannot pay, if we do the surgery as an outreach in their community, they can still access it. Wow. And then they can see. But in the rural communities, when you go out for outreaches, do they get the total um, eye care package that you give to the hospitals? Well, no. Then what happens that the local eye nurse or optometrist screen the screens the patients and if they have cataract they line them up and then we just go and do the surgery and we go back home and then the local eye care worker follows them and makes sure that the results are good make sure there is no complications and then they can also get glasses after surgery which sometimes are necessary from their local eye care worker and so all those are free that's that's no but the glasses are not free and the, and the surgery depending on the on the patient and on the community and on the facility there are usually charges but it's it's usually not more than a few hundred Ghana CDs which might sound like a lot of money for some people but if you think about your eyesight I mean that's your life that's your livelihood if you don't see you become such a burden to your family even you tie up someone from the family to lead you around and to help you manage even that costs much more per month just one person not working and taking care of the blind person instead that if you look at the price like that it's really not that much so if i get you cataracts can only be washed not surgery so well washing and surgery is basically the same thing i mean i'm using that term because people get uh, yeah they get worried because uh, when surgery is mentioned and all of that yeah then then they run away but nowadays uh, luckily there has been good quality cataract surgery in ghana even in North Ghana for, let's say, the past 15, 20 years. So then the word spreads. Oh, my neighbor 
neighbor had operation, now he can see maybe I should also go for the operation. So it's slowly, slowly spreading and people are not as scared of operation as before. But just to be on the safe side, we usually just mention, uh, mention washing, but then when we give the consent form, it does say that it is surgery. Okay, and, and that's the main and only way for cataracts That is the in only way, area. there is nothing else. Okay, okay. I, I, I want us to come back to glaucoma a bit to, to look at that condition. Oh yeah, let, let me just say a okay. funny story about cataract. One of my colleagues' uh, sister had a cataract in the village. She was in her 40s, white spot in the middle of the eye. We diagnosed it, but she never came for surgery because uh, they advised her in the village that she has to put a bird dropping into the eye three times a day. So she did put basically bird dropping to her eye three times a day for two years. It's lucky she didn't even go blind completely. And then after that, I guess she had enough. She came to us, 10 minutes surgery, she could see the next day. Wow. So, and the, the, this is even the sister of one of our colleagues. So what do you expect from people who don't even have relatives? So I can't even imagine how she must have felt that, oh my God, I did this useless treatment for two years. Probably she was very upset at her fellow villagers for giving her the wrong advice. And we are hoping that now she will spread to other people with the same problem to come for a regular treatment, not for local. I know about the SLT, that is a laser treatment, I guess. For glaucoma. For yeah. glaucoma. And I'm told that you are the only hospital that has this. Yes, it, in, in Ghana, we are the only hospital who has this machine. What is special about it? Well, it it's works quite well. We, tried to, we started to do it only a year ago, but now we are seeing the follow-ups. And most patients who had a response, meaning lower eye pressure, even after one year, it works. And the best thing about the laser is that lots of patients who were on eye drops before, they do not need the drops anymore. If they have the laser treatment, they can stop using their drops. Or patients who are just newly told that they had glaucoma, we ask them, do you want the laser or the drops? And lots of them pick the laser because long term it's cheaper, it's easier, and it's non-invasive and it's relatively easy. If I had glaucoma, I if I had glaucoma, I would also pick the laser. And the, it is uh, repeatable. So sometimes in one or two or three years, the effect wears off and then we can repeat it again. So how's the treatment like? Well, the treatment is really nothing. You just sit in a, in a machine, you, you put your chin and then you see a couple of light flashes and you don't even feel anything. And in about five minutes, it's finished. And then we do the other eye, five minutes. It's even less, actually it's three minutes. You see a couple of light flashes, no pain. Some people feel some pricking sensation and then, then it's finished. And then usually the eye pressure reduces after the laser, at least for a few years. It doesn't work know. all the time, but most of the time it works. Having light break into your eye, it, yeah, I'm just wondering what kind of light is that because we actually advise not to always yeah. turn our eyes to the light. Yeah, but it's a different kind of light. It's just a very, very focused light. It's very, very, very thin and it's very short. It's like, I think, 600 nanoseconds, which is much, much uh, shorter than a second. So they are very thin light rays in very, very small area. So. Uh, this laser doesn't have any side effects. There was an older version of the laser, maybe 40 years ago. They invented it and that could give side effects, but this one has been around for about 20 years and it, it has no harmful effect. Sometimes it doesn't help. That could be the worst thing what happens, but usually it does help. But some patients, when you even mention the word laser, they get worried, but slowly, slowly we can educate them that to accept this modality of treatment. Now, what are some of the activities that you think that we do that put so much stress or pressure on our eyes? For example, there are some young men or people who are, should I say, um, if they work with welders, mm -hmm. they weld the metals and they have to use Oh yes, that can them. be harmful. So yeah. how, how, how does that come in? How can they prevent some of these things like uh, the damage to go into the eye. 
Well, it's very important for any kind of professional like carpenters, auto mechanics, welders to wear protective glasses because there is no day when we do not see at least one or two people who lost their eye from trauma from a piece of wood or a piece of nail or something hit it. So these these professions, they always, always have to wear uh, protective glasses, just clear, clear lens in front of the eye. Now the welders also need some shade because of the UV light, but they usually have it. But welding doesn't uh, doesn't give any permanent damage. It, it yeah, can hurt the eye, but it, it heal, yeah, but even if you don't wear, it's very painful, but after that the eye heals. Really? So it's not that serious with the welding, but with the but no, but if you wear, if you don't wear a, a, a protective glass for a long time and you are you keep doing that, wouldn't that be harmful to the eye? Well, maybe a little bit, but it doesn't give that much permanent damage. Plus, the welders, the eye pain is so bad. If they don't wear the protection next time, they will put it on. Oh, okay. But but there is another misbelief which I would uh, like to contradict. Like lots of people think if they have blurry vision or some kind of eye problems, then it's better if they don't use the eyes. Actually, the more we use the eyes, the better it gets because the eye is a part of the brain. So there is really no reason not to read or watch TV or not to do any kind of activities. If someone has blurry vision or if one eye is blind, it's even better to use the eyes more. The only exception is with a computer. With the computer, the if you stare at the computer phones. all day or the phone, that can give you eye pain, but by next day it will go away. So the computer and the phone, it doesn't give you any permanent eye damage, but it can, it can give you eye strain, low pain, headache, if you just stare at the computer for too long. But it would not damage your eyes permanently. Sure. That's also a misbelief. It would not happen. Okay, um, I want to go for a bit, but when we are back, I want us to look at, is it advisable to wear a glass before you, uh, I mean eyeglasses, before you work on the computer mm -hmm. to prevent? So how does that also help not to strain your eye too much or put any temporal damage to your eye? Um, we are still here trying to understand how we can take care of our eyes. Do stay tuned. <music> Praise the Lord. Oh. Uh -huh. ah, ah, ah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Are uh -huh. you ready? Okay. Like a rainbow, uh -huh. so my life be colorful. Uh -huh. If you don't know, a life with this man is beautiful. Everywhere I go, it's he as he. Anything I do, it's he I go. Seek him first, all things you shall go. Welcome back. We are still here on the Reflection Show. Yes, before we enter, I was just about asking you, so I can decide to just wear any glass, eyeglasses, maybe the ones they sell in the market or on the street, or do I have to come to the hospital for a special eyeglass for the screen? So maybe if I have to use my phone to prepare a presentation or my laptop, do I need a special eyeglass to help me uh, not strain my eyes so much? Well, young people and middle-aged people, they do not need glasses for either the phone or the computer. It's only people usually above 40 who need glasses for the phone and maybe 45, 50 for the computer. So if someone has no trouble seeing and no trouble working with the computer, even if it's eight hours a day, they do not need any kind of glasses. Does it have an effect wearing glasses for a very long time before? Uh, we hear that, so if you enter the internet wearing glasses for let's say by 10, 15 years, up to the time you are 40, 50 years, you lose your vision completely. Is it true? No, it's not true. No. It doesn't happen. It's just another misbelief which has been spread for so many years, but 
It's not true, no. Can one have both glaucoma and cataract at the same time? Yes, you, you can have both diseases, yes. And then okay. both of them need treatment, but then the cataract is the washing and then the glaucoma is the eye drops or the laser. Or sometimes we even do surgery for it. Sometimes if patients have both diseases, we, when we do the washing, we also do a second surgery for glaucoma at the same time. So it's like two surgeries in one, and then both diseases will be treated. What makes, uh, what could be the possible reason for someone to have both? Well, it's, they are, usually they are independent, but sometimes glaucoma, when it's very bad, it can also cause the cataract itself. But to have both is just bad luck, or it means that the person is old. Can the wrong eye drop that has ever been used cause a permanent damage to the eye? So eye drops can cause permanent damage. It's quite rare, but it still happens. There are eye drops, uh, the class is called steroid eye drops, and they are for inflammation or from al for al allergies. But some people used it for years because it has their symptoms and eventually these eye drops can cause both cataract and glaucoma. But luckily it is quite rare, but it can happen. I hear some friends who say that they have allergies with their eyes, each them, and they have to go for some sort of injection to reduce the allergies. Do you know about that? Is it an injection into the eye or into the skin? No, I think into the skin. Yes, actually it's a treatment which is very common in the West and it's called desensitization. And what happens that they inject small, small parts of the things the person is allergic to under the skin many times repeatedly. And then sometimes the allergies go away, but usually not. I was not even aware they do this in Ghana. They do. They, they do. Yeah. Well, so I don't know much So when that happens, does it end up affecting the person? Does it end up affecting the eye more? Because if I have an allergy and I have to go for an injection and you are putting the same thing I'm allergic to into my skin, how does that? Well, it's, it, it doesn't work for eye allergies to begin with. I practiced in the U.S. for many years, but I never even heard of this. So it doesn't work for the eyes, but it might work for certain other kind of allergies like skin allergies or asthma or or. Uh, some people have like stuffy nose, they cannot breathe for those kind of uh, or rash on the skin. Sometimes it works for those kind of conditions, but I really would not recommend it, especially here in Ghana, because it's expensive. It re requires many, many injections and probably the practitioners here are not even giving the real thing. So I would not recommend that to anybody here. Can a surgery go wrong? The surgery can always go wrong, but usually it's very, very rare that the surgery would go wrong. And even if it goes wrong, usually the problem can be corrected later. So it is very, very unusual that someone doesn't get help by surgery, but it does happen. What is the average number of days? So maybe somebody comes from a rural community for a surgery <clears throat> and supposed to come back for a review or something, it's not able to come back. How does, like, would it be able to be treated or the review should be done to help the eye heal? No, the review always should be done. So we never do surgery when we cannot assure that the patient is followed. But luckily we have many eye nurses out in the communities and also optometrists. So the patient has to be followed on day one, week one, and after one month. Now, they usually the one day they stay where they had the surgery. So that's not a problem. The week one uh, follow-up is usually is uh, done in the community unless they can come in or stay uh, until the one week. And usually if things are good at one week, even if we do not follow the patient for longer, 95% of the time there is no problem. But we, we always assure that the patient is followed at least for one month. And if we cannot make sure that the patient is followed, then usually we do not even do the surgery. I've watched movies and I've seen these two instances where someone is hit on the head and it goes blind. And the other time where somebody was born blind and go, I don't know what I did because they move and goes for a surgery and they put a whole thing on the eye, they open the eye, the person can see. 
Is it possible that somebody who is totally blind can have a surgery and see again? It is possible, but not, not with children. So if someone went blind before, let's say, age four, after that, no matter what kind of surgery the person is getting, you will never see well. If the, uh, it depends. The earlier the blindness came on, the less chance the patient has to recover vision. And usually these patients can recover some vision, but they will never see well. But if the blindness happened after age four or five, then usually some conditions can be reversed and then the patient can see right away. But someone who was born blind, uh, no. Even after surgery, they can see a little bit better, but not much better. They have to still wear the glasses to see so well, much Well, so, some, of, some of them. Like we did a project in the blind school of Wa, which is a wonderful place. And we have seen quite a few children who had cataracts, the white lens inside the eye since birth. And this condition is easily treated, but they, nobody took them to the doctor. So we operated on 14 of these children and three of them got very good vision, but they all got blind, not at birth. But all the others who got blind, who were already born blind, they got better small. So. Before they couldn't walk around, now they can walk around at least, they see colors, they can read, they can do their chores at home, but they'll still never be able to read or watch TV or drive or do anything like that. But they, they were still very happy with the surgery and in the blind school they teach them how to read with their fingers, how to read braille, and then some of them even goes to university. So if someone's blind it doesn't mean that you don't have a life. Um, about the, the I, I think what, when you were uh, when you were talking about this, you spoke about the nerve. And I was just mentioning that sometimes you watch some videos and they hit someone, the person goes off, and sometimes the person loses the eye. Isn't that when the nerve is affected, it can affect the eye? That is very very true. Uh, nearly every week, at least two or three times, we see patients, usually young men who had a motor vehicle accident. Usually, it's with a motorbike. And then they have head trauma, they faint, and then they wake up and then one eye is blind. Usually it's not both eyes. And there is nothing we can do. What happened that the, the strong head trauma, it caused the blood supply of the optic nerve, the wire, which connects the eye to the brain. It caused the blood supply to close off and then the nerve dies. And even the blood supply comes back maybe a few days later, by then it's too late and these patients will never see with that, that one eye. Very rarely it's both eyes, but it's just usually one eye. And it's very sad, but that's why God gave us two eyes. At least they can see with the other eye. But <laughs> it's, nothing can be done at nothing. all. Like... So that's why we advise everybody to wear helmet when riding and also protective glasses, because lots of things can also hit the eye while you ride a motorbike. And that can cause a different kind of problem. So it's not just something happening directly to the eye, but, but when, the, when your nerves are disconnected from your body, you can also go blind yes, that for that as well. And nothing can be done to manage it. To At that it. point, no, nothing. It's very, very sad to tell these young people. In the beginning, we even tell them, oh, some small vision might come back, but we know it never comes back. We just don't want to make them upset. No, and I then drop. they come back, okay. no, no eye drop, no glasses, no prayer. So can the nerve or, no. or do you have to go and hit your head down again for the nerve No, to, the problem is if the nerve is dead, it's dead. There is nothing to revive it. Uh, some people even try to do eye transplant, putting an eye. Yeah, but I, the I, problem I is that the nerves, there are one million nerves. So how are you going to connect a million nerves? We cannot even connect one nerve. It's cut, so you can't connect them. Oh, and I don't think it will ever be even... Uh, eye transplant, uh, uh, maybe if it's not the nerve and I was born blind and my nerves are active. Can so I take someone eye to put back into my eye? Yes, yeah, so not the whole eye, but as I mentioned, the front surface of the eye, which is called the cornea on this model eye, is just the very, very front surface. That is the only thing which can be replaced, not the whole eye. The cornea, they, they take it from a dead body mm. and because that person doesn't need it anymore. Unless some people think you need it in heaven, but <laughs> then you don't donate. So in the West, there are so-called cornea banks. So they take the cornea, the front part of the eye from dead people. 
its eyes. Of and course, they, they ask the permission and take. they store them in a bank. They freeze them. And if someone has a cloudy cornea, you can just pull wow. a, a cornea from the bank and then cut out the, the cloudy cornea and then you put a clear one and then the person will, will see okay. again. So we are just trying to uh, see, start this in Ghana. In Ghana. Well, it started how... very, very slowly, but there is no no eye bag. I wonder who wants to donate there their is no eye their bag. mothers. Uh, because by the time you, you find that some are already buried within 24 yes, hours. Yes, that's one of the some, reasons. Yeah, and all of that. And then the religious uh, beliefs, but actually... And they would also the, want to, 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 to charge people for it. They would want you to pay. Yes, so now the corneas we get is, is from the West, and it's there's like three thousand dollars so it's extremely expensive but actually in uh, in nepal they did a huge media campaign about corneas and cornea transplant and over there people are even more religious than here and they more they believe more in heaven that your body has to be whole when it gets to heaven but thank god thanks to the media campaign they were they got celebrities to talk and slowly slowly over a few yeah. years they turned they turned the public opinion and now they have an eye bank and wow. now it became like a privilege to donate your eyes wow. to the bank so other people could see because what's the point of taking your eye up to heaven over there you don't need it anyway you give you that eye uh, when you get yes, there, you restore uh, your yes, eyes <laughs> but at least you give it to somebody on this world and then the person person will see your final words be our time is up what's the final words you want to say to our viewers well i would like to say that uh, if yourself or you have any relatives who have blurry vision or blind, don't just wait at home and think that it is from old age or it is something which cannot be helped. But please take them to the nearest eye care worker for a checkup so we can see what is wrong with the person and how we can treat it. And also, all patients, I mean, all people in Ghana who are above 40, they should go and have themselves checked out for glaucoma which can be done in the communities also, because this is a terrible disease which can steal your sight and which can, which can blind you. And at that point, the sight cannot be brought back, but we can treat it preventively. So all people should go for glaucoma check once a year. And yes, we can treat it. Thank you very much for coming. I have been speaking with Dr. Judith Simon, um, so the eye specialist at, at the Northern Community Eye Hospital here in Tamale and then we're speaking about glaucoma, we're speaking about cataract, how the treatment options are and of course at a point we went to talk about children and how we can make sure that our children do not go blind at an early stage. Um, it's been a wonderful discussion. I think that if you go to our YouTube page you see um, the previous discussion on our how to care of our eyes and this was just a build up to reach out to more people out there that if you get blind right now you uh, you will not be able to see well and also do the things that you love doing so i just want to encourage all of you today that make time go to the eye clinic and get your eyes checked thank you very much for watching the reflection show we are still calling on partners and sponsors to come and sponsor the show so that we can reach out to a lot of people get our contact details on the screen 054-957-8512 0549578512 so that we can do business together, we can partner with you and do so much amazing things together. My name is Martha Anabila. Do have a good night.